Hey everybody, Maction here from TabletRoms.com, and I'm back with part two of the review for the Prestige 10 by Visual Land. Now we're going to focus primarily on the software and the performance of the Visual Land Prestige 10. Now I'm going to start off by uh, taking us back to CES. Ah, good times. Well, that's when we first ran into Visual Land and Joe Polanka, and we got a hands-on with the then-just prototype Prestige 10, Prestige 7, and 8. On the Prestige 10 that we saw there in CES, there were seven home screens. Normally there's just five. And the interface is a little bit different. Now you can go ahead and swipe left to right through the various home screens, or you can tap on the icons. You can tap on, you know, one right next to the other, or you can tap on something on the other side, and it actually flips through all of them. Also, the icon for the list of apps moves between the home screens, so all you need to do is tap on that icon, no matter which home screen you're on, and you'll be able to access your general list of apps. There are really four things that I want to go over, the first one being benchmarks, the second one being games, the third being browsing, and the fourth being markets, because these are all very important to the device. So, for starters, the benchmarks. Now, I like to run any given benchmark. I prefer AND22 and Quadrant Standard. And I like to run them multiple times and then take the average results. For the AND22 benchmark, the average result that I was getting from the Prestige 10 was 3,050. And for the Quadrant benchmark, the average result that I was getting was 2,105. You can take those numbers and compare them to the numbers of other tablets and uh, get a good idea of how it ranks among those. But in actual application, the Prestige 10 handles itself very well. Here's a game, Osmos HD, that is really nice. Almost all of the games that I threw at the Prestige 10, it ran very smoothly. And some of them with only just a minor bit of difficulty on very rare occasions when there were lots of objects on the screen to take care of. But for the most part, it handled it nice and smooth. Um, this Osmos HD is no exception. If you watch, the gameplay looks very smooth and very nice. Now the next one I want to focus on is browsing. So I should note that, number one, I'm using my super slow internet connection, and number two, I am using the stock browser. Anyone who's been around Android for a little while can tell you that other browsers will do a much better job than your stock browser. Personally, I prefer the Dolphin browser because that has an option where the website doesn't automatically load Flash content, and that can make your browsing experience a lot faster. But I am using the stock browser, so we take a look at Visual Land's homepage, and that has lots of Flash going, and it works just fine. And then we move on over to something like Tablet ROMs, go into the forums, and it works just fine there as well. The last thing to look at is the markets. It does come with GetJar, the One Mobile Market, and the Amazon App Store already installed. However, if you're just dying to get your hands on Google Play, I've got you covered. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do it here, but I will show you later on some videos over at tabletroms.com. Well, thanks everybody for watching. Hope you appreciate it, and stay tuned for part three where we will go over battery life, something that I know all of you are dying to hear about.